volume's fine. Here we go. You sure? Because I didn't hear yeah, the... Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Right, make sure. Oh, no, our, our, our volume's fine. That should be picking us up just fine. Uh, it's the other stuff. If not, this is going to be really, really weird. 45 minutes of just pipe steam. Pipe steam. <laughs> that man's pipe steam is... Right. I know it was kind of embarrassing, but I think that's wonderful. I love pipe steam now. Yeah, I think we're going to have to use that word. Forever. Anyway, sketches selected by the author. No, that's not the title. This was the title of this one, Shnetti? Oh, uh, why is that a history? Oh, no. Which sure. was selected by us. Yeah, there was no, there was no like, grand question of, me, guys, what are we doing? We were just like, why do, I think this is one of those moments in teaching where we're like, you know what we could do? Yeah. Anything else. Anything else. But let's talk about why we do this and why we talk about this and why we like this. Why do we? And why everybody else should like this before, I don't know, the world blows itself up. Well, I think, I think okay, so why study history? I don't know, because math doesn't have as many lasers. Yeah. Uh, you know. Gosh. Okay, so I thought this was going to be a much easier... When no, I had an idea. I had an idea. So, instead of a wise study history, I think one of the biggest things I want to, I want to address first biggest is... Queens? Biggest things? Oh, okay. I have a cold. I have a very... I have a... I've, I thought you said the biggest queens. So I was going to go with uh, Catherine. That's hurtful. She <laughs> runs. Um, are we talking like strongest queens? I was just going biggest. I would love to see a fight. Between um, RuPaul and Catherine the Great, I would, I would, I would use necromancy to see that fight. <laughs> Could you imagine one speaking, yelling, and screaming in Russian, and the other one? <laughs> that would be freaking awesome. Okay, I'm not going to take one of these, one of these menthol mints, and then try to drink a Dr Pepper. That's the, that. Down awesome. that way lies Menthol, madness. minty, cherry, Dr Pepper. Oh, oh God! With the sugar across the board. Zero. Yeah, my zero sugar Dr. Pepper, my zero sugar. That'll cancel it out, right? Exactly. How much zero? Really good. All right, so anyways. Okay, so why study history? It was one of the biggest things you were talking about. Okay, sorry. So the three things I came up with why study history is one. Man, um, thank you. I have been. That's the only thing I've been doing today. I haven't done my job. I made them copy notes. Um, one, because it gives you an underlying understanding of where the world is going today. Two, because it's an extraordinary story about normal human beings trying to do their best to get going. And three, because people don't want you to. That's my punk rock one. People don't want you to. If people, like, do you, do you the see? Sid Vicious approach to, to the to, Sid Vicious to history is people don't John want you Rotten to. Approach so we're going to we're gonna do it, dang it. Summon the clash. Let's do this. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna tell you, which one do you want to start with? Because I'm gonna go through all three of them. That's good. I'm okay. All right. We're doing an order for night now. Number one. Like we we never follow the order anyway. So yes, it get off the very very quickly. Yeah. Number one, the underlying understanding. That's too much under uh, underlying understanding of events of today. So let's talk about what we're not allowed to talk about in school. Okay. What were we not allowed to talk about in school because it, for fear? Oh, there's a lot of subjects we're not allowed to really mention in school. Yeah, that ties in with number three, by the way. Yeah. So go ahead. So let's just let's put one and three together now. Well, okay. Well, so you can get the better if if you know what has happened in the past or what's causing a current issue or a current conflict or a current debate, whether it's in the U.S. Congress or the British Parliament or anything else. Take take anything happening in Russia and Ukraine with with Gaza and the West Bank that, that, that's happening right now. Uh, the DMZ in Korea, how, how North Korea is always kind of saber rattling in, in the Pacific. Saber rattling means they're pretending to want to go to war to get people excited about war and government. Content, content co clarifiers. Content clarifiers. But if you understand what, what's going on, it doesn't make it easier. It just it gives you a broader understanding of the connections that are being made and a possible reason why this stuff is continuing to carry over, whether it's 50 years old, 100 years old, 300 years old. I mean, we, we could go Russia and Ukraine because Russia, you know, Putin at the beginning claims he's getting back old Russian territory. 
we mentioned the, 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 the Kievan Rus just the other day in the Mongols podcast. We did. Right? There's that connection there. So that's the thing. It's like it's all about your point of view. Your historical point of view is extremely important to Putin. It is reclaiming lost territory from a dissolution of the empire to the Ukrainians. It's an attack on their sovereignty that they've tried to have for several hundred years. They were trying to get this. Yeah, but more recently, the early 90s. At least in the early 90s when they finally broke away. But pushes for this stuff have happened all the time. I mean, we talked about it with, with the Mongols. Trying to understand where you come from and where you get this these ideas helps you to understand that we are all interconnected. You cannot no no country exists in a vacuum. Not anymore. No. Not anymore. Can, you used, to you used to could. You used to could. Used to could, you could. That's, that's a good southern term. Used to could. Used to could. But right. because the world has gotten so small, stayed the same size, but it's gotten so much smaller. And what's terrifying is with the advent of the technologies we have today. The world is literally in the palm of your hand. Oh, easily, yeah. You the, know what's going on 10 seconds after it happens. Yeah, the greatest trick people have ever done to control the narrative of the world was to give you instant access to it. And the thing about history is the access is not instant because once you read one thing, you have to read five more things to get context on that. It, it's not instant gratification with history. There's no quick and easy answer beyond what's feudalism and even then like i could talk to you for two hours about like what feudalism is yeah and let's isn't. not go down that road i would love to that's a that's a bar question yeah like my my professor at, at oklahoma state university go pokes um was adamant that there was no such thing as feudalism no such thing as feudalism and whenever we brought it up he would become enraged like bruce banner enraged I told you guys, blah, 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 blah. There's no such thing as feudalism. It is simply a matter of minoralism plus the Kiwitates. Don't get me started on Kiwitates. Did he have that accent? Uh, yes, okay. as a matter of fact. He was a Southerner who went to Yale and then came back down. You call him Colonel? No. Like all good Southern gentlemen should be called Colonels? I called him Sir. Or no. Close enough. Professor, because otherwise he'd kick you in the... <laughs> I had a professor who preferred to be called Colonel if you wanted to call him Colonel. That is so southern and hurt. All good southern gentlemen should be Does he, called Colonel. I do declare. <laughs> you, you prefer to call him Colonel, you can call him Colonel. Or you can call him Doctor because you know, he has a PhD. I say, I say, I say, <laughs> this whole this whole emancipation thing <laughs> is just a fad. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing, that's though. That's way southern. That's, that's like, way too southern. Yeah, that's, that's way too southern. That's Biter, Texas right there, man. I, you hear me, Viner, Texas. I'm calling you out, you bunch of racists. Um, and that's when I can't get everything else is perfectly fine. Viner, Texas cancels me because of that. No, yeah, buddy, dude, you have Viner, Texas. No, it's a, it's a bad. No, no, they're different. different they're different. They're topic different different down there. Anyway, so that's the thing. It's like you have to have an understanding before you can talk to somebody because you have to be able to have that common ground to reach. What's our favorite c word on this podcast? Compromise. That is our favorite C word. Yeah. Also constitutional. Yeah. And also socialism. Mm. <laughs> all letters. No, no, no. no, no you mispronounced it. It's called communism. That's what you're trying to pronounce. You wish. You totally wish. <laughs> that's the that's the C word that you were thinking of. But that's the thing. So when you and I talk about these things, we have to have an understanding. Like when I talk more about the Mongols. That was my area of expertise, and that's why I defer to you when we have more constitutional arguments, because I listen to your point of view, and I listen to the information you have, because not only can I understand where you're coming from, but you also managed to give me enough grounding in the information that I can start to form my own opinion. Start to being the key yeah, phrase. Yeah, that's the key part, because take what you've been hearing, take what you've read, take what you've watched on the myriad of TV specials that are out there on all the channels. The right? Aliens channel. The Aliens channel, otherwise known as the History Channel. <laughs> still history on it, unless the aliens did it, from what I could tell. I'm totally into that. Right? Thing. 100%. But if you, if you take that base knowledge you have and then expand out from it, and there's nothing wrong with just having the base knowledge level, but if you want to get deeper into it and understanding and start making those connections, or if you prefer to get deeper in the weeds on certain things, that they really find interesting and get stuff in it, then that drives the passion. But if you want to know what's happening now and why things are happening, 
there's probably a historical connection in the past and it might be a recent past or a way back past that that, that helps explain what's going on and why it's still happening. Yeah, that's the other thing. thing that everything keeps happening. Nothing's ever really over. So that concentric circle. Thing. Yeah, absolutely. Keep going back and forth. You know, that, 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 that saying, you know, you're, you don't learn your history, you're oh. going to repeat it, right? I, but here's the thing, though. History repeats itself anyway. Okay, so I would argue, okay, that's well, the thing. We use it in school to motivate the kids to study and not fail, right? There's that. There's that. That's what it's used for. Well, but if you look at it, you can make these connections of what's going on throughout the past. I mean, it's not the exact same, obviously. Yeah, that's why. Uh, but they're, they're, they're still always pulling in. Right? Oh, like, absolutely. You, know, you talk about. You know, when you, when you can insult somebody by just shorting, shouting years at them, right? Like in Europe, right? You, you can just you mention a couple of years and like three quarters of the people know exactly what you're talking about. 1535. Exactly. And it was, hey, right? No, there's, there's something to that. You know that little bit of history. You can make that connection because it brings it up. Go to Europe right now and say appeasement and see what happens. Or you're appeasing that group in favor of the other group and watch them go apoplectic on stuff. Oh, uh, wait, apoplectic or apoplectic? Apoplectic, yeah, right. apoplectic is when you have a very Appalachian, uh, when you start spitting in an Appalachian that, accent. That, that was Scotch Irish that came over. <laughs> but that's the thing. Um, you're absolutely right. It does repeat, but actually doesn't, I, I think, what was it? Uh, Terry Pratchett said it best. Um, history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. Uh, yeah. Really, really rhymes. I mean, look at let's go back to what you're talking about the impeachment situation. Um, World War Two, Britain sends over uh, Neville Longbottom to go and uh, appease the uh, <laughs> appease the, the the Hitlers, and uh, then again when oh, sorry Neville Chamberlain, I'm tired. Neville Longbottom. Neville Longbottom, he brought over a big old plant. Um, <laughs> so Neville gets over there and he talks to Hitler, and then uh, freaking we send Macron over to talk to putin yeah he, yeah it is it, it is one of the big two going to talk to the aggressor about hey well, and in the in-between president george w bush uses the word appeasement when when, when the terrorist attacks were happening in the early 2000s when, when he goes over to europe he, he drops that word a couple times talking to the british prime minister talking to the french president right again making sure that they you want to be on what is perceived as your right side of history yep. here, right? Bringing those, bringing those images back up, those words back up to it might have not have played in the States, but I guarantee it played in England and played in France. Because they have a different understanding of that word than we yeah. do. We didn't appease anybody. Well, okay, unless they had billions of dollars, then we appeased them all the while. That, that's, that's J.P. Morgan. That's J.P. Morgan. Uh, which here's the thing, as much as I hate JP Morgan and stuff like that, I have to understand what his influence is as much as I may dislike the man, as much as I may disapprove of his actions, his actions, his methods have made the world I live in yeah. the world I live in. And I have to at least understand that at a base level. And that's why we start to study history. You can't change the rules until you know what they are. Yeah. yeah and if you want to change something, you also got to have ideas to change and if you don't have ideas to change we start falling back to well what have we done in the past <laughs> right and then did, did how we change from that and it, again we, we get caught in that cycle because that new the new stuff scares us yeah until we realize that it's not really new nihil noe sub solace there's nothing new under the sun yeah. all the big problems and changes we feel like are, are unique to us are not there was a time when people were absolutely terrified of the newspaper because it would stop people from talking to each other. Then they were absolutely terrified of magazines because they would stop people from talking to each other. And now there's pretty pictures in the magazines. There's a pretty picture. Yeah, the pretty pictures would dumb it down for them too much. Yeah. And then now they're the books, books, all these different things over and over and over again. Now we're worried about the little uh, devices in our hands being the things that control our lives. And sure, all of these things can become an addiction unless you spot the pattern and then say, I'll stop it here. Where does, where does the stop happen? That becomes the big. So I think that's why we should. The problem with with uh, and how do you do the stop? Because well, in the past we've seen how things have been stopped. Well, <laughs> everything's been stopped. But when it has, when it when it comes into the point where somebody in power has to stop you, 
that's where it's gone too far. We need to start learning how to stop ourselves. Because that leads me into the second point. History is the story of normal people trying to live their lives in the circumstances they're given. There are wildly out of control things that they can't stop, but it's how they react to it. I mean, three years ago, we had the pandemic and we locked down for almost a year. And that nearly shattered our economy. We lost 1 million fellow Americans and the world kind of ground to a halt. And the things that came out of that are the push for better jobs because people realized I want more. I would say better jobs. Because oh, no, sorry, better pay for the jobs they have. Pay for the jobs because you've got a bunch of people now that that aren't unemployed. They're just jobless because they're choosing not to work. You have people basically saying, "Well, uh, can I work from home?" Which, right? yeah, uh, one of the things I read was that uh, employers are really upset that no one wants to do the nine to five anymore. They want to get off at three so they can take their kids home from school and then do some more work in the evening, which seems fine to me, right? Because there's a push, but, all of a sudden we remembered that we had business, family. But the, the business world doesn't revolve around, does, 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 does it, doesn't function at nine o'clock at night unless you're trading in Asia or somewhere else, right? But that's the beauty of the at home. That's the beauty of our, the change of normal everyday people's lives. It can. Have you well, ever let's take our job? Okay, and take our job. Wait for it, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> please, right? But take take our job. What are we going? What are we going to do? Because there's always been talk about changing the start time for high school kids. Because blah 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 blah. Right? Oh man. But then there's some districts that tried it around the country, and they go back to the normal one because we're babysitters. Well, but they got to be. Some of them got to babysit when they get home. They there's can't have a little that. Right, we have that. So, what are we going to do? We're going to end it. Well, you have some school districts talking about going to a four day, the furlough day, yeah, four four day work week, a four day school week. But the flip of that, you got to extend the school day. You do, and it's a ten hour day. Well, that's just a five day work week. That's what it is. Yeah, I, you, you just still got to get your five days in. All right, well, let's fix you this still problem. Right get now. Your time in. I can fix this problem right now. Let's let's do this like college. Let's open up teachers to certain hours. We uh, don't do that in the United States. I'm because we offer free I'm, public education. So let's 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 get more flexibility. I'll come in from seven to about ten, then I'll go home and have my siesta, and then I'll come in from three to five and finish my day. And you can have a class anytime in there. You can do a college style thing, right? Yeah. And that way, if you need to get your little brother or little sister out, you can take an afternoon class. And, I'll do all the morning classes because no one's going to come in in the morning. And then I'll do my afternoon classes for 200 people each. Okay. You're still looking at 32 to 3,600 kids, right? And that's the rotation. Other teachers are taking separate times. And we just kind of overlap sometimes. So we're going we're to take the entire general population of a public school. Yep. Where no matter where you are on whatever you want to do, uh -huh. figure out your course schedule like you're going to college. Yep. Are we not already college heavy with education? Should we not be promoting vocational schools and vocational education oh. Oh. and things like That's that? That's not even instead, the same. Instead of, no, it is because you want to turn it into this college level thing. So then right? we, yep. Because we have to offer a free public education. If we're going to turn it to look like the college model, those kids that don't want to go to college anyways, and I'm stuck in it for four years of high school. So let's do the vocational training as well. Okay, now we're tracking kids. How is that wrong? It's not. I'm not saying it's wrong. But it's not what we do. It's not the way it's set up. Okay. And it's not our system. Well, our system might be broken. It, it might be. I'm looking at our system right now, and I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, I mean, you. you how, many, how many countries around the world yeah. put all of their children? all of their kids in the same schools, in the same classes together, give them the exact same tests. France. And then says, all right, here's your numbers. So they don't do it in Germany. They don't do it in Japan. They don't do it in most places around the world where, where they're tracking kids, right? Yeah. So when we get all these numbers, like America is 15th in math, well, how many countries in front of us are only given that math test to the kids that are tracked to go to college or go to a higher education or go to secondary education? Seven. 
There are seven. No, there's more than seven. No, I just want to put a number out there. I don't know. I have no idea, but that's the thing. Um, these other things promote, these other school systems promote the vocational training. They promote the industrial work. But also, you got situations like Norway, who have a very fluid system. Which way? Norway. Oh. Not my way, but Norway. Uh, Norway's got this great system and idea uh, where they actually allow the person to have more freedom in the fact that if you're really good at science, you can take as many advanced science classes as you want, but you know we're going to get you to basic levels everywhere else. You don't graduate. You don't get promoted until you get it done, which is really, really interesting. But look at it this way. The point of that is we're trying to put back together an educational system while we're flying the plane. Yeah. We're trying to patch it up while we're flying the plane. And that's what people in history have done all throughout history. The, the bubonic plague comes in, right? Hits everybody. People are trying to fix the plane while they're still flying in the air, even though they didn't have planes. Uh, the Crusades, the Hundred Years' War, the Mongol invasions, all these big situations, these big deals. 536 AD, when the sun went away for a year yeah. because of volcanic explosions. People are still just trying to put things back together. And the fact is, no matter who your super king is at the time or who's the pope or all these amazing things, it doesn't matter because it's just normal people trying to deal with what's going on around them. And that's what I think that's one of the biggest, most beautiful parts of history to me is how resilient we are as a people. You know, just this absolute ability to take the worst the world can toss at us. And then say, yeah, but my turnips are still going to come in pretty good. This year. <laughs> I have something. You're still going to, people still, like, that's the thing I try to tell my students. It's especially with, like, uh, the Byzantine Empire, right? Uh, Justinian and Theodora. Uh, Justinian is the emperor of the Byzantine Empire. Theodora is his wife. And the crazy thing is, by all accounts, they actually loved each other. Like, really loved each other. And you got to wonder throughout history, how many people have actually absolutely been in love with their spouses and just been happy about that or truly enjoyed having children and kids that really just had a great childhood, even though, you know, <laughs> the dirt's everywhere and it's very Monty Python-esque. I mean, that's the beauty of our system. As much as it seems like cause everyone has this Im image of history as like everything before us is this dirty, nasty, squalor, witch filled burning, death thing where everyone's going to, you know, nail you to a wall or something like that. And it's actually kind of nice. I would love to go to a vacation in the Hanseatic League and chill there. Can you imagine Flanders in 1500? How awesome that would have been to hang out there for a while? Before or after all the killings? Uh, mid. <laughs> His body's still around. Uh -huh. and th but, that's your, but that's your approach to history. You are a, I'm going to get into the wood weeds. I'm going to take all the little things out and then Try to build it up from there. Yeah, right. I'm the, I'm the Lego pieces historian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like the little, 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 little two count. You just got to. Oh, not even the, yeah. dude. The, the, sometimes it's not even the, it's the one count. It's like we're gonna use the all one of these one counts, <laughs> and I'm gonna build you Venom's face. Yeah, right. That's 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 your approach to to Charlie. How you studied history because that's what that's what you linked on to. You like the stories. You like the weird. Yeah. You like the details. Right. Those types of things. The other approach. Oh. Usually my approach. How does it all connect up through history and how does it influence what's going on? Not only the reasons for it happening, but can we kind of project out to see what's going to happen in the end? You're the, you're the divination historian. You're the, can I find the pattern and then predict what's going to happen? Well, it's not predict what's going to happen. That's, it's, a little, that's the political scientist idea. It is. Well, this, uh, 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 all right, here's the question. Is history an art or history of science? Because I know what they say at most colleges because of what the degree you get in. Oh, listening to some people argue about history and change it and move it around, it's Aikido. It's a martial art. <laughs> I've watched people bend over backwards matrix style but, but is, to is, make is, things is work. Is history an art or history of science? Not how we teach it. Oh, okay. How we teaching it should be an art. How we teach it should be a mixture of both. Yeah, But but it's it's got to be an art because you got to be able to weave the stories and everything else. I would argue yeah. it's kind of an alchemy. Right. It's more of a science. If you can – well, hold on. Says the man who likes to get into the weeds and tell all the and tell all the and tell all the blusters pictures. But but the story, <laughs> which but is the, the art form of it. But the story is the science because the story I tell you is not necessarily like just a story. It's an anecdotal. It's it's data. This happened. 
and it connects up to that happened in the past. And then, hey, remember this that happens a little further. We haven't learned it yet, but this is going to connect to that. And then can we make it work again? Right. Okay. Isn't, there, isn't there people whose jobs it is that working for governments around the world to predict when these next big events are going to happen? Like those are intelligence well, analysts. Well, yeah. Yeah. Right? That's that's kind of their whole thing. They're taking history and turning it into a science. Right. Using what we've done in the past, using our prior knowledge. Ooh, activating that. Right. Right. To what we've known to happen and how it plays out. To, to what's going on now? Let's just leave that alone. Schnetti is angry because, <laughs> <laughs> right? But using what we've known to tell people what's going on. Why is this happening? What's going on? Why did this take place? Why have they been angry for each other for the past seventy years or seven hundred years, whatever? It, it, Usually it, both. Right? Yeah. And why are they harboring all these things? If you can make those connections. Right. What's happening now makes a hell of a lot more sense. It does. So that goes back to our original question. Right. If you if you kind of know and. I don't know. I, That's the science of it. Yeah. But I would say the art of it is to realize. Doing that and looking too hard back at the patterns can be dangerous because we fall back but, into those. And if you can't. But the you art is trying to find them. Yeah. The art and the science come together by taking what we can do with what we should do. Because history is not just a study of of connections and stuff, well, but it's also define should. And in whose context of should? Because it's Kim Il Jung's same context as Ooh. Joe Biden's concept of should. See? Again, no way. Congratulations, no you just got put on Fox News. <laughs> is Kim Jong il just like Joe Biden? <laughs> Boom! Shetty's he's got a got a got his own talk show on Fox <laughs> News now. I gotta have an interview with Sean Hannity first. Oh, don't, I, don't I get God. that first? Right. There's there's set, set it up in my room. Well, OK, so hold on to this. The best lessons we teach. Are when we can connect them to the emotions of the people of the past. Uh, you've taught the Holocaust. Yes, I teach the Holocaust. There is something inherently universal about the fear of that happening again and the tragedy of what happened that connects with everybody. But. When I taught the Holocaust, the last part of teaching the Holocaust is the late 20th century genocides. The fact that right, the fact that we didn't right, we 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 didn't stop them. We didn't stop this from ever happening again. Right, we can Cambodia, uh, Bosnia. Uh, for examples, right? Just a couple of quick examples. Just, I know I'm leaving. No, no, no. You're you're absolutely. But tons left. That, that whole after even after the, the, the holocaust right holocaust you know you're looking 13 14 million total when you take all of the different oh, groups yeah. right you know half of that being the, the european jewish population right but uh, just less than 30 a little over 30 years later it's happening again yeah right? oh, in, God. in cambodia right uh and it's still happening today 2023 yeah the, the uyghurs in in northern china yeah Round so, it up for the religious belief. So the, that, that leads me to my third thing. The reason we study history is because if it weren't so important, there wouldn't be so many people trying to stop you from doing it. Because people love to twist history for their own ends. Oh, yes. I mean, oh, yes, 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 yes. Why would, the, why, would we not, why would we not look at the Holocaust and say this is the worst, one of the worst things we've ever done as human beings? We need to stop this. Uh, we, can, we can all agree. We can all agree at this level this is no longer – this is this is not an acceptable move anymore. And yet, the first thing that happens is people commit it anyway. And the second thing that happens is people start to say, "Well, did it really actually happen?" Well, there's an attempt. There's well, an attempt. It's called the United Nations, but it's run by politicians. Which is their first mistake. Which is the yeah right. So we're going to have all of this group coming together, but if the United UN don't agree to do something, nothing gets done, right? How long did it take? To, to decide that we're going to send UN troops into Rwanda. Oh, God. Right? Uh, Almost well, six months? Yeah, a little so. bit longer than, way longer than it should have, right? Yeah. It, 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 it was three days. Sensibilities, right? Say, say that, right? <laughs> but if, if you look at the history of European intervention in Africa, let's just say, right? They're, they're quick to get in there to get what they want, but they're not quick to come back and help out with the mess they left behind. 
very much so. Right. And you can trace that back to, to the 60s, 70s, before we get even to Rwanda in the 90s. Well, so, back to the 80s. Should, should we be surprised that it took them that long to decide? Shouldn't we be surprised that, 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 that nobody cared what was happening in Cambodia until it was exposed all over the news uh, in the killing fields, right? Oh, what, was that that, yeah, what was that John Oliver said? He said, the things the British Empire did would never have happened in a, in a 24-hour news cycle. No, because we're all over everything. Twenty-four hours. And, what, and whether it's it's true or not, right? The new the new headline pops up, pops up, and we forget the old one, and we go from there. And that's what that's that's scary because people can manipulate it for what they want. I mean, I had a student the other day saying, "Oh, Mr. Scherzer, uh, they're ta- the, you know the president is foolish because he's sending in these people now." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, I haven't heard about that. When did you hear that? Oh, I heard it from my dad. Okay, well, where'd your dad hear it from? I don't know. He read it somewhere." Where, yeah. if history and, wasn't so, and it's, it's not even twenty-four hour news anymore. Twenty-four hours news used to mean CNN when CNN was good. Yeah, twenty-four uh, hour news means TikTok, YouTube Shorts, uh, somebody's Snapchat channel, or whatever the heck, whatever the hell they're doing, <laughs> whatever these whatever these young kids are doing these days. The, if that's where they get their information from. They're not. It's the no, Snapchat's fault. <laughs> who's sitting down and watching the thirty-minute news though? 30, it, whoa, whoa, 30 whole minutes? 30 whole minutes is what it's supposed to be. Dude. Okay, 24 counting for commercials. Okay, well, 22 actually. Eight yeah. minutes Eight minutes of commercials, Shnetty. You, you gotta make money. You gotta keep those eyeballs on the screen so right. I can sell you Nestle's. But who are the, who's, who's the eyeballs? The octogenarians? Who can't? Well, I would say they can't do anything more, but they can apparently run for president. They can run for president. From both parties. From both parties. Bring us your best 80 year old man. Right? Ah! But- how many people watch just watch the news? Oh, and we can't even get them to watch the weather, realizing it's going to be cold outside when the cold front went. Hey, they do watch the story. It's cold today, right? So, How are we going to get them to watch the news to understand what's going on? I, and I will, man, I will ask this question: Is it truly news, or is it just are old? newsmen truly newsmen now, oh. or news people, or whatever we're supposed to call them? Hit in that real quick. We right. will jump right back to that. I wanted to tell you, um, I asked a question of my students. It was actually very terrifying, the answer. I said, how many of you guys, you just see the headline article? You don't read the he- the news article. You just get the headline article. And then, because it said it, and not necessarily because you mean to, you just suddenly absorb that as an actual fact. Right. And hands, Schnetti, majority hands went up. I don't have time to read that, Mr. Scherzer. Why not? Well, it's too long. It's too many read. TLDR, too long, didn't read. Yeah. Give me the give me the synopsis. And that scares me. Now, back, unpinning that, go on back to it. I forgot what I, what I put a pin in. I know, that's why I did that. <laughs> that's my tactic. Yeah. And that's kind of history's tactic as well. It's like, yeah. it's like we'll we're going to, we'll make you forget it. Because, right. or we'll make you misremember it. Even worse, we'll make you misremember it. Yeah. And then... Like Carl Sagan was terrified of. Carl Sagan was terrified. We'd stop treating history like a science and treat it more like a like a like a you know just a, a belief system. Yeah. I believe this is the history I believe in. It's almost becoming like that. But it's like he's sitting there. And he says, you know, we we consult uh, our oracles and we consult our. I mean, you and I love paranormal shows, right? Yeah. But we have to know that that's that's just a fun thing to look at. People are sitting there and taking this new stuff or taking history and trying to shove supernatural bull crap onto it because the reality is so boring. Oh, look at these, these giant steps in, in um, Central American uh, pyramids. It's like, no, dude, that's terrace farming. Yeah. yeah, but they could be for giants. No, for giants, yes. we, we found these giants in the Midwest in the 1800s, but nobody can bring you the skeleton. Yeah. Well, that means it's false. Yeah. No, no, it just means somebody. They got lost. Oh, they got lost. Quote, skeletons I, get, I love, I I love when skeletons get lost. Shetty, I would love for there to be a, a closet pl- somewhere with skeletons. Oh, in. Well, I have several of my own. Uh, <laughs> I would love, that was rude, by the way. Uh, I would love for there to be like an all powerful, all seeing Illuminati organization running the world because then someone's actually got a plan. Yeah, they were doing a plan in place. Oh, thank God, there's a plan. Oh, no, the, the stock price. Somebody's got a plan. I wish they would, you know. Let some of us in on it. I don't really care if they let just so they'll be like, look, I know it sounds weird. I know weird stuff's happening. We've got a plan. plan. Okay, good. Follow the process. Follow the process. The process. Process. Thank you, Illuminati. That's so nice. But that's the thing. 
Why study history? Because people will manipulate it to tell you that you're there right. They will lie. They will lie to your face about it. Point of view lesson. It's a point of view lesson. Oh, God. Right? Alternative facts. How do you know what we're talking right now? Well, if I hope. If you listen to any of the other podcasts, how do you know what the hell we're talking I about? I hope they Are we just up here bloviating for 45 minutes or so? Look, there's no we're doubt. Trying to kill time here. We're trying to kill time. We're, we're definitely bloviating. And I'm, bloviating. And, I'm, and I'm trying to say things that would get you in trouble when you get home and get yelled at by, by oh, your wonderful Lord. wife. <laughs> what did he say about this? Well, did you tell me? I, you could argue with him. Is that call him <laughs> no, but uh, that's the thing. It's like. It's it's not just but I hope people are challenging us. That's why we finally made this public, right? Yeah. And like the longest time I was worried because I didn't want us to get in trouble with like the school or anything like that, which you and I have never said anything on this thing that we would not say out loud in the hallways at other students when they come up and yell at us. Yeah. But the thing is, I hope they find wrong things. I hope that's that how we get better. Or even better, I hope they sit there and go, Yeah, that's a really good interpretation, but if you add this information. What about this? And they put it in comments. And that's, and what, say, that's yeah. what should happen. That's what should happen. It should be, hey, I hear what you're saying, but I could use, if you're going to make that uh, assumption, Scherzer, give me some, this is the data we need to find. Can we go back to our old buddy, Neil deGrasse Tyson? Neil deGrasse Tyson, as much as I think he's a little bit over, a little bit overrated, yeah. he makes good points. Yeah. I get tired of these people, these masters of one discipline being spread across. Like, I, you don't ask me my thoughts on astrophysics. I pretty stars. Yeah. But when people like Jordan Peterson, who are neurobiologists, and Neil deGrasse Tyson, who are astrophysicists, are talking to Joe Rogan about how history should be studied, <laughs> a part of me gets my hackles up. Yeah. And I want to tell them, stay in your flipping lane, boys. But. The, the point is, if you can make that argument and still, I don't know, go up and have a pleasant conversation in, in, in this debate. Now, we, we, we touched on a couple. We've touched on some, some, some pretty heavy stuff the last couple of times during the podcast and then after. Right. That's the one, after that's the one that got you yelling at the house is, is our is our post discussion. Right. Because, yeah, because that's what we I think we I'm going to ask you a question and you don't have to answer it. Were you nervous about putting that on a podcast? The, 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 the conversation we had? No, not because. See, that's the thing. I I don't know why I did. I was nervous about that, but then I stopped and said, "Am I worried about my perception, or am I worried that the world?" I wasn't worried about being perceived as a bad person. I know that I'm a bad person. I've, I've accepted that about myself. Yeah. But the trick is, I'm worried that someone won't even take the time to stop and think about it. Oh, that's going to happen anyways. They just they're just going to take they're going to take a, a headline or a quote and then run with it, and there we go. Right? Yeah. You've seen that multiple times. They won't listen. You don't go into the detail. You don't go into, and you don't cite any evidence saying, this is what they said, this is what they did, and this is why it's a bad thing. And that's another way of hiding history is the soundbite theory of history. Yeah. If you can't have a pithy answer, pithy means quick and witty. Yeah. Uh, if you can't have a quick and witty answer in five seconds, right after hearing a new bit of information, yeah. you lose. Yeah, you know, the perception is you've lost. Because you, you don't have time to digest it. Yeah. Right? And you, you know, you will. You want to make a quick thing, but you, then you're rolling through that rolodex in your head about, okay, where's that information? What do I know about that? Right? And then sometimes, you know, when you know a lot of stuff, oh, it takes yeah. a second. And that's the problem. It's like you know, so and so owns someone else, and it's like, no, you don't own someone in a single conversation. Yeah. You bring up a new point, and you say, "This is what I think," and they go, "Oh wow, that's new information. May we have this conversation a different time?" Yeah. Not. And that's what we tend to do. We we tend to. Carry on, we pick up later and just yeah. move on, right? Yeah. But then it kind of comes back around. So, thank you for listening to my three points. Uh, according to the man's pipe steam uh, over there, <laughs> Shneddy, what's your what's your opinion? Why do we study history? Uh, to me, I I I I like the simple, right? Why? Well, see why? It, it helps. <laughs> it, it helps us understand. The current world we're living in. That's why you keep pulling up the Santayanico quote. <laughs> Helps us understand the world we live in. Do you think that your appreciation for other people is enhanced by your knowledge of history or detracted from by your knowledge of history? Oh, it, uh, no, it, it enhances it. Because you, 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 if you know a little bit of their history, just a little bit, right, of... Uh, of 
what they've gone through in the past, what the, what the people's gone through, what the country's gone through, right? It should give you a little bit of appreciation of what uh, at least they're, they're, they're doing now, whether you agree with it or not, you, you can understand what, where they're coming from, right? Or what their struggle is and they're trying to get out of it, right? Absolutely. I think that's the scariest part of it, though. I think it's one of the reasons why people are quick to knock down history and stuff like that, because to be quote unquote right, you have to dismiss the other person's point of view. You have to eradicate it. But I think the problem is when you do learn about history, you are filled with empathy and you are filled with an understanding, even if you don't necessarily agree with them. Like, I don't agree with the fact that the Mongols, you know, took over the largest contiguous land mass in the world. But from their point of view, they were just trying. They were, they were, yeah. they were doing what they wanted. They felt yeah, was like, you, don't, you don't have to agree with it. But if you can get a, even a small concept of their point of view, of what's happening in that time period, in that time that frame, would give them. that would give them that motivation or that want to or or that lack of understanding, modern, modern thinking, understanding, right? That this whole concept of, you know, we got to put our, our, our modern day morals and sensitivities on the past that's not understanding the past no no that, 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 that's that's making ourselves feel better and maybe superior because so, well are we the judges of history are we as the end result so far we should be the students of history not what the are we gonna judge it okay that's it's good. already happened we can't change it we can't go this is why i hate what if games i love well, we, you and i have a colleague that loves to try to get me to do a what if game, right? Yes. I hate them because it didn't happen. You can't give me a what if. That doesn't happen because it never happened. It's we know back. what happened. Stick with what we know what happened. Now, if we get new information, that's a different thing. And we got to always be searching for new information. We just can't always go, this is what's going on. But historians out there all the time trying to make sure that, one, the information we already have is correct. Or two, do we got to add more to it to add a little more nuance or a little more understanding or a little more connection to something else? Right? But don't give me a what if game. That's, there's already too many variables. I don't need another what if. Yeah. It didn't happen. I don't care. <laughs> do you think that like the myth of a people enhances or detracts from who they really are? The myth of the Viking detracting away from the fact like when i first studied vikings i saw all right let's look at it this way uh because we are in texas the myth mm. of the texas revolution Ooh. right and uh, we're, we're, please address we're, all we're, torches we're, and pitchforks too <laughs> i love the myth of the texas where does the myth end and the truth begin or can you kind of marry them together and understand the difference between the two it's the same thing with the vikings can you understand the difference between the two let's look at the texas revolution give me give me a myth of the texas revolution no. Go with let's go with the, the, the most obvious one, the Alamo. Right? The, wait, what? Oh, the, the Alamo, okay. The Alamo, so. Right? The Alamo. So uh anywhere between I don't know, three thousand to five thousand Mexican troops. Uh -huh. Right. Uh Davy Crockett was killed last. Right? All all, all these mythologies and that, that, that kind of revolve around it. Yeah. Right. It, and the story itself is enough. It's a great story, right? It's enough. Travis's letter is enough. Right, uh, you know, victory or death. Right, yep. Travis's letter said, "We don't need, we don't, we we don't need, but we want, we we want to, we want to make it larger than life because it's a good thing. With the Vikings, it's a bad thing, right? The, the European perspective oh, yeah. of the Vikings. Right? How do you want to turn that mythology? But can you find that good as a good historian? Can you find that good middle ground between the myth and the legend and okay. the beautiful stories and then the reality and can you be accepting of both because i think if you can you're a pretty damn good historian and but you it, can weave it into the, the yeah, bigger you can weave it into the bigger context yeah. so and give me then let's let's play the game uh well, we did the folklore thing right yeah we did the folklore thing Henry. why is it important and yeah. the answer is yeah. because it, it shows you where you are that it's a temperature check the stories we tell ourselves yeah. and the history we tell ourselves are a temperature check for the time we're in if you're listening to somebody talk to you about how the world is ask them about the history and if they tell you the way if they if they change the way history goes if they emphasize certain points over others then you can find their bias and you can find their their where they're trying to connect it into the bigger story and change the narrative right 
For example, give me a one sentence summary of the Vikings. They raped, murdered, and pillaged all of Europe. And yet, that's that is the predominant thing, right? Yeah. I'll yeah. show you three TV shows that show them nothing <laughs> but that. I'll show you a weird Terry Gilliam movie about Vikings. But at the same time, what if what you know, Morpheus glasses on? What if I told you they were also phenomenal farmers? Yeah. And they were excellent shipbuilders. And they actually, if you just gave them their stuff, they'd be like, okay, goodbye, guys. I'll see you next time. Yeah. And that's the thing. Or what if I told you they started settling in the places they killed? They kill your neighbor and then take his house and then be like, hey, guys, let's go golfing. <laughs> and they'd just be fun like that. And they'd be like, are you guys Christian? We ought to be Christian too. Yeah. And this is Norwegian people like, what the hell? But the thing is, it's like, we're going to get letters from Norway now. <laughs> Really well, really, really well written letters from yeah. Norway. Um, but that's the thing. That's the uh, that's the bit is, yes, that's the perception. Raping, pillage, and murder. Yeah. Toilet. But the reality is they did that during this uh, during the winters to make sure they had enough stuff to yeah. get through the winters. Yeah. And it's like, what would you, you know, what would you do if like you're running out post-apocalyptic style? So final thoughts. Go for it. We it better be good. Like we, it better be really good. We, we, we study it so we can understand the world we live in. We, we study it so, in theory, when we get involved with other peoples, other nations, we have some kind of understanding of maybe what we're getting into and why things are happening the way they are. And if you can do that, then you're halfway there. I agree with that. I'll say it's so that we can learn slowly and over time how much our stories affect other people's stories. And we truly start to understand the effects we have on other people. We can start turning towards the idea that we need to start working together. This is our island home, this pale blue dot, as mm -hmm. Carl Sagan says. And it is nothing but a bunch of stories. It's right there in the word. What, opt-in, uh, oh no, sorry, oh, that's, we can do it. It's a high story. Okay, so, <laughs> oh, it's, all we're it's the high story. All we're doing is telling stories. But you got to be careful for the people who may get selected by the author. Yes. Oh! Yes. Take, take right that, down. pipe steam. Take like that. Leave it. All right. Thank you for your time. And uh, tell us we're wrong. Yes, tell us we're wrong. Say it. <laughs>